Hello and welcome to the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, your host as always. And today I'm talking about something that I've had a lot of requests for lately. Um, and it's all about tips to getting more inquiries and therefore more sales. So let's go to the show. As the founder of the Landscaper Circle, and the Limitless Landscapers podcast, I am here to help you get more money, time and freedom to make your life and business truly limitless. Through my experiences as the owner of a garden design and landscaping business and through tried and tested methods, if you want help with the marketing, managing and growing of your business, then you are in the right place. If you are a landscaper, garden designer, horticultural business or a supplier to the industry, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. Hello, hello, lovely people. Um, nice to see you this week, or not actually see you, but hopefully you're listening in this week to this episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. And as I said in the intro, it's all about ways to getting more clients. And I'm going to be sharing three main tips for you and then giving you some ideas that I'll expand upon in the next podcast. But essentially, I've been talking to a lot of members in TLC and in the industry as, as a whole, really, and having some good conversations. But what's come up is, luckily, we've all experienced such a high level of inquiries, particularly through the old COVID times, that now it's, it's really showing when we've got lesser than average inquiry so it's really showing that we've had a drop off and I think most of us are experiencing this you're getting a, a slower level of inquiries like there's not not no inquiries it's just a slower level whereas before it was completely mad it was just going absolutely haywire really for a while and I, I think you guys remember this time where it wasn't unusual to have sort of 15 inquiries by lunchtime and trying to get back to all of them and, and the, the constant hamster wheel of dealing with inquiries and customers and having to manage their expectations was really exhausting. Whereas now it's quite nice to have a reduced amount of inquiries because you have got time to get back to them, get them booked in, get their quotes out and really manage their experience and their expectations as well. But if you are getting worried, and I know because when you go from such a high to, you know, a low, which is probably similar to years prior to COVID, by the way, if you look back and, you know, if you've got your inquiry log and it goes back that far, go take a look, go and review to, to test what this year versus last year, the last quarter versus the quarter of that year. Just go and have a look to see if now you're seeing a level that goes back to pre-COVID craziness. But... I'm always here to serve. I'm always here to listen to you guys and come back to you with any information I have that can help you, that I know can help you. So I'm going to share with you three tips to get more inquiries and therefore more sales. And it's three things to bear in mind, really. And number one is consistency. And I know this is probably not new for most of you if you've been around a while, around TLC and, and this podcast, but it's all about being consistent. And there's areas that you need to start being consistent in. If you haven't been, you need to start, you need to put a plan in, you need to manage your time to be consistent. Number one is being consistent in your brand. So are you posting social posts branded up or are they just ad hoc? Have you got all your branding up together on your website do you have your vehicles branded do you have your site boards in your brand do you have your brand on your uniform do you get the idea basically being consistent in your brand means whenever somebody sees something so it works very well in my landscape and design business particularly on social because everything's in the brand colors the brand format the brand logo is on everything if you see a navy blue post with something landscaping related you're probably gonna go that's all landscapes if you've been looking for a while and seen us and followed us for a while so that's why i'm saying when someone when you use your brand and i mean colors logo fonts everything about you when you start keeping it within brand people will begin to identify things with your brand so it's really important to be consistent in that and make sure everything is aligned with that brand so 
all your, you know, what your workers are wearing, your uniform, just basic stuff like this, letterheads. How are you sending out quotes? Has it got your updated brand on if you've done an update recently? And, and I, for one, have this where I've got a really old van which has the old logo and old marketing style on there. I really want to get it rebranded and that's sort of on the agenda for this year. So it's things like that, just making sure you're consistent in your brand. Secondly, inconsistency is being consistent in your marketing efforts. Do not stop marketing. Even when you're truly busy, do not stop. Even when you're quiet, don't overescalate things. You just need to be quietly consistent in your marketing efforts over over time so you may you may choose to do things such as ads or google adwords anything like that you may switch them on and off to suit but what i mean is being consistent in delivering your marketing strategy now you may not have a marketing strategy per se it may be in your mind you may be just having a um, play around with things but essentially if you look at ways in which you want to get in front of your clients and be consistent in marketing in that way then you're more likely to get inquiries all of the time rather than just some of the time when you decide to market or not now you need to be so consistent on your social media so pick a platform or two platforms but just make sure you're consistently posting the amount of times you want to post do not think just because you're busy you can't do it that week because then you're not showing up consistently it's all about building your brand's awareness. It's all about making sure people know you're there. The same goes with blogs. If you decide writing a blog a week or a month is something that's of a priority to your marketing strategy, then I suggest you stick with it because the, what I see on a lot of websites is you start with a blog and you're really good. You're consistent. You're posting every month. And then all of a sudden you see on a website and there's a gap for a year. Well, that, all that does is make people question your credibility and your longevity. So if I were you, if you're choosing that as a strategy, start it and don't stop, just be consistent, whether that's once every two months, once a month, once a week, whatever suits you, you choose what feels right and you go with it. Just don't ever stop doing it. And blogs are great, but that's for another time. Also website, you have to consistently update your website. I hate to tell you this, your website isn't a once and done thing. It's a consistently updating it with new projects, with keywords, with lots of new stuff all of the time to make sure that Google are finding you, to make sure there's new content for Google to find, to make sure that your portfolio is up together of recent projects, not just old ones, to get new client testimonials, to basically make sure what you're showing on your website is still what you're delivering. Because there are lots of us out there who have changed our brand, for instance, but haven't got around to updating the website. There's lots of us who've up-leveled. So we're starting to do bigger and bigger projects, but on our website it just shows the smaller projects. And then we wonder why people are inquiring for small projects that we don't want to do anymore. So it's all about being consistent and keeping that updated. It's being consistent in sending out emails or leaflets. If that's what you're doing, you need to stick with it. If you decide that doing a leaflet drop once a week or once a month is part of your marketing strategy that's gonna get you leads, then I suggest you consistently do it for a minimum of 90 days. And I would say that across all marketing strategies, you need to do it for a minimum of 90 days to really be able to see what works. And that brings me on to tip number two, and that's reviewing your marketing efforts. So why I say 90 days, that's three months of effort, go at focused effort into whatever strategy or strategies that you've chosen. But what's the point in doing it if you're not gonna make the time to review it? I mean, the best way to start is to start an inquiry log. If you don't have an inquiry log already, start one, please, because it's in there that you'll be able to review like where the jobs are coming from. So that will give you an idea of what they're searching. You can even ask, what did you search for on Google when you Googled me? Or they might say, I've seen your van. Oh yeah, what, what area are you from? Blah, 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 et cetera. So you can find out what areas are good. You can find out what's working for your marketing and Ultimately, you can see if it's a good or bad lead because you'll have it all logged. So even if you don't have uh, do a site visit, it's not the right client for you, still keep it on the log so you have a record of this. So then you can review it because if all of the lost leads, which are the ones you don't want to work with, if they're all coming from leaflets you've delivered, then I would suggest stop spending money on leaflets because they're not the right clients. See where I'm going with this? By looking at 
your inquiry log by looking at and reviewing your marketing strategies every three months, more if you want to, I would, you will certainly start to get a picture of what's working, what's not working and what's working, but if you tweaked it a little, it could work even better. So you need to start looking at statistics as well. I know that sounds really boring, but it's actually quite fun when you get into it. You need to start looking on your Google Analytics to see how your website is performing, to see what pages people are looking at, to see where they're coming off, where they're coming in from. So where are they coming from to your website? That's quite a good point because, again, wherever they're coming from is the marketing source here. Look at your insights on your social profiles. It's not all about followers and likes. It's about engagement. It's about how you're getting out there to new accounts. It's about how well people are receiving the content you're putting out there. I would truly not worry yourself too much on followers because it's really all about engagement. Um, get your stats on conversions as well. So, and what I mean by this is in your inquiry log, you'll log all your inquiries, good and bad. Then you'll have some that have been a site visit and then turned into a quote, and then you'll have some that are lost. Well, it'd be really interesting to see where the actual sales come from. So if you have, say, a number of inquiries and five out of 10 of them have converted into sales and they're all in one area of, of where you live. So for me, say in Southampton, they're all from the Chilworth area. Well, then that's a bloody good area to focus on for more leads because they're all converting in that one area I've, I've had it where certain areas at different times of the year converted better so for instance Chandler's Ford was one area that every time we had an inquiry there we pretty much 90% of the time got the job and it was really weird but then you can start focusing on that area for more because obviously that area has your clientele in it it's all about looking at where your clients are um, and that comes down to reviewing the marketing efforts. Um, and when you are reviewing, now it's really important because you can get all this data, all this information, then do nothing with it. And what I want you to start doing with it is start looking at what's working really well and put more effort and focus on it. Take it to the next level. If leaflets are working, printed leaflets being distributed in a certain area, do more. If Google ads are working for you, do more, spend more money with it to get more inquiries that way if you know but say if on the other flip side you've just spent a load of money on facebook ads and not one lead has turned into to a sale you've got loads of leads but they haven't actually converted because that's another thing you need to be aware of what what's the conversion rates is very important actually when you're looking at going forward with your marketing essentially then i would turn it off i wouldn't bother with facebook anymore if that's the case so the reviewing is really important because it's only then that you can start tweaking you can start really leveraging the really great marketing strategies that you've got in place that work for you. Because let's remember in my last couple of podcasts, not everything works for everybody in the same way, particularly in this industry, because it is a bizarre but beautiful industry that we're in. And you need to see what works for you and what works to get the right clients for you. So reviewing is really, really key. And I've put it at number two because it just makes sense to go there, but it really is. It's the best thing, the most important thing to look at. And my third tip to getting more inquiries and sales is basically following up. Now, how many of us, and I'm guilty of it, and I'm sure you guys are as well, how many of us actually can put our hand on heart and say we followed up with every single lead we've had? I'm just watching the um, tumbleweed blow. I honestly have missed leads. They've either, um, I, haven't, I haven't thought they're very good, so haven't contacted them back or haven't contacted them back quick enough. And I've been guilty of this, particularly when it's really busy. Not so much now because we've got time to deal with new inquiries, but when it was COVID crazy, yes, some people got missed. And this is the key to following up. You need to follow up on every single lead, regardless of whether it looks or sounds good. Because when you start getting on the phone, start talking to that client, it can turn into a whole different project and you can get a real good feel, as you well know, once you start talking to the client, once you, once you start taking them through that process where you're going to either say yes, you want to see them or not, um, you can get a real good feel for the client. Are they going to be a good client in payment? Are they going to show up? Are they happy to pay for a site visit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What's their budget expectations? So I would suggest following up on all leads a priority. But also then 
how else do you follow up? So essentially we all phone our leads up, we book them in or not, and then they're left until someone goes to see them and then they go into the sales pipeline if you've converted them. But we really could utilize our customer databases. And what I mean by this is many of us don't do this, many of us do. I used to do it religiously, not as much anymore because focus areas go, you know, I'm running two businesses, so it's quite hard to be brilliantly perfect in both areas and both businesses. So I, I myself am guilty of not doing this quite so much, but utilizing our customer databases for email campaigns. And there's a multitude of email campaigns you can do. I will talk more about that in a later podcast. Um, but let's just start with a common one. Following up open quotes to get them closed. A simple email follow-up. I've done it numerous times and followed up and actually got a conversion from it. So what was one email written and sent out, got actually one sale off the back of it because it reminded a client that, oh yes, that I've been meaning to contact you. The quote is open. Yeah, we wanted to go ahead. Can we book in for another visit to, to go over the quotation and get booked in? So yeah, customer databases. Also, it's not just that you can then use it for emails. Where we obviously, as landscaping and garden design people here, we tend to take full addresses to in order to conduct, conduct site visits. So therefore, there's the opportunity there to send lumpy mail in the, not just a leaflet, but printed material, maybe a letter, an invitation, the list goes on. I won't share all ideas right now, but essentially there's lots of things you can do with your client database that we don't do, which comes under following up and making the most out of what we've got. So that's about it. I feel like I've come to the end of the, the three tips. However, there are a lot of ideas like I touched upon just then. And it's important because I, like I say, talking to lots of people in the industry, this is something that's coming up as a question at the moment. And over the next few weeks, and I've just started actually, we're covering different ways of getting more clients. And I'm gonna do some more deep diving into the following podcasts over the next few weeks into this. But we're gonna be talking about things like referrals, lead magnets, making a website that works, social media, profiles, associations, email marketing, and loads more. So there's gonna be quite a few tips and hints that you can, if you're feeling like you don't even know what marketing strategy to, to employ right now, then you might get some hints and tips. And then obviously over at the Landscape Circle, we're there to more fully support you in this. If you want some help, then please DM me. If you want to get on the wait list for when doors reopen later on in the year, then please click the link in the show notes. It will take you to the wait list. You can put your details on there and you'll get some bonus content as well. So I think that's it for this week. I'm quite passionate about this, this subject. This is the subject that I have been in for many, many years, other than running a business as well. But essentially, um, there are so many ways that we can get more clients and we just haven't thought outside the box yet. And these are just the basic ones that I've used or currently use that I will be talking about over the coming podcast, but there will be more to come on that. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please leave me a little review. I'd like to get in front of more people that are looking for more inquiries in this industry. And yeah, I do get the industry. I am one of you guys. So please feel free to refer people to come and watch this podcast as well. And I will see you next week with another episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. Bye guys. <laughs>